I hate making videos like this, but I'd have no spare time to be making videos in the studio. I have one main job and two side jobs, so we have the main job today, and I want to tell you about the Daphne Velma complex. If you notice, these two cartoon characters have been more sexualized than about any cartoon characters you could think about when it comes to cosplay. I'm not much of a cosplayer. Is that the new way of talking about roleplay? Back in the day, if you dressed as Anakin Skywalker and made love to your girl, that was considered roleplay, but now it's cosplay with more of an emphasis of fascination on cartoon characters and making them real or sexualizing them, correct? Well, I don't understand it much, but I can see at least that Daphne and Velma are huge amongst cosplay. Of course, initially these were cartoon characters, then you had live action films that depicted them as real life beautiful women. I'd say accurately in the respect that we always figured, as weird as it is to say, you get an essence from the cartoon that Daphne was intended to be depicted as a perfect 10. And I think Fred was supposed to be depicted as a Chad, right? And so Daphne went with the Chad. I think Velma was supposed to be depicted as a nerdy average woman. But as time went on, I think people went from wanting a woman like Daphne to wanting a woman like Velma because it seemed less threatening. It seemed less scary for men who don't have the confidence to approach a woman like Daphne. It seems safe and it seems obtainable. And I think the fascination surrounding these characters has lent itself to that attitude when you look at how sexualized Velma is and how much more sexualized Velma is than Daphne. In other words, how much more we're starting to lift up, sexualize, and appreciate, at least in a sexual attraction way, the average woman. Velma is the average woman, the five, that could glow up to a seven with makeup and a push-up bra. Of course, years ago, you had the live action movie where they actually made a scene that sort of plays out the same way. I think it's Daphne that convinces Velma to dress up sexy and tight leather, titties popping, and you get that first hint of the idea that, oh, Velma can actually be really sexually appealing if she does herself up and ditches the glasses and wears contacts and pushes her boobs up. So what is this saying? To me, it's an attitude that reflects where we're at right now. We romanticize the five. We romanticize the six. And we sexualize the five and the six because we think they're more obtainable than the 10. So then what happens is you got a whole generation of dudes that are too intimidated to go after the 10, which is Daphne, and think that they're cheating the system by approaching the six or the five, which is the Velma status woman, because they figured she's not as sexy as Daphne, which means she must not get as much sexual opportunity, which means she's more obtainable and less intimidating if you're afraid to deal with women. But then the problem becomes is there's a million other guys that had that same idea. There's a million other insecure guys that don't think enough of themselves to approach tens and they've all approached the six also. So now the six has the same mentality as a 10. Now the Velma thinks she's at least as sexually attractive and visually appealing as Daphne. And so this is only to say there's a reason there's an imbalance in the sexual marketplace where the sixes don't get with the sixes and the sevens don't get with the sevens and the tens don't only get with the tens. There's an imbalance. There isn't an equality in respect to people staying in their own lane. Everybody's going beyond their own lane. And so maybe when traditionally you would have had a woman who's a six, who's perfect for a man who's a six. Now you have a woman who's a six who thinks she deserves a man that's a 10. And now who is the male six supposed to pursue? A female four? I'm not saying we should only value tens because they have their shortcomings in terms of personality. When you're treated like a celebrity your whole life, it becomes very, very difficult to be a real life down to earth person. But now it's becoming equally as impossible for a six to view herself realistically and not get an inflated ego because she also sees herself as a 10. Now you can call this sexist, but we do realistically conduct ourselves based on the attention that we get, which gives ourselves an idea of our own value. Now I consider myself a male six. I'm just good looking enough to not be bad looking. And I do fine with women as a result of being a six visually and maybe being an eight in terms of ambition. I'd like to say being a 10 in terms of charisma, but that's my own opinion. If you disagree, hit the comments and let me know if you think I'm a 10, but I think I'm a male six. But interestingly enough, I think the only real desire I've ever gotten from women as a result of my ambition or my charisma, not so much my visual appeal. So let's say as a male six, women started fawning over me as if I was a male 10. It would definitely affect the way I treated people, the way I dealt with people. You can't put yourself in the mind of a celebrity unless you have celebrity status. And you can't put yourself in the mind of a 10 if you're a six. So I'm just speculating here. I'd like to think I would still be down to earth, but if for some reason women fawned over me like I looked like Brad Pitt, I can't tell you what that would do to me. I really can't. This has been the Daphne Velma Complex. Let me know if you agree in the comments. Yeah, so, yeah, so.